I'm here with Damna of Elven King to talk about the upcoming new record, Reader of the Runes, Rapture, out April 28th on AFM Records. How are you doing today? Hi there. I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Uh, excited to be here. You know, this new round of interviews promoting the, the new album, actually, after four years now. It's almost four years uh, since the release of the previous. So, yeah, exciting times. So let me start off by asking you this. When you develop a, a concept trilogy, uh, when it comes to the Reader of the Runes, uh, what do you outline first? Do you do you look at the overall concept that's gonna that's gonna force you to think about the trilogy as a whole, or do you think about each album individually and work on those records individually, and, and concern yourself on how they're gonna connect a little bit more down the line? Well, uh, actually, uh, when we thought about um, writing a, a concept story, uh, we came up uh, basically with the general you know, plot of the whole story. So we we had in mind uh the characters, we had in mind pretty much what was gonna happen in, in the in the story. So uh, when we decided that it um uh, it was a story that was <clears throat> a bit too complex and long to you know uh fit one CD, you know, one one album, one one set of songs, we, we decided to split the story in into three parts. Uh, at first, we 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 weren't sure that mm, you know it's gonna you know it it would have turned a three part story, but uh, yeah, we, we divided it into three main you know uh, like chapters, big Chapter. chapters, and uh, and every chapter, every part had um, was you know focusing on a, on a specific part of the story, and uh, in in the first one we have this you know character that just appears in this in this village and starts um performing these divinations to to all the all the ones that you know just wanted to to have the 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 runes read by this 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 mysterious character and and we have eight songs that focus on eight you know um characters and the eight divinations that the reader of the runes um is is making to each each of them and it it was like an anticipation of what would have happened in the second part. And in the second part, we have uh, actually the kind of the uh, you know it, it's like a, a eruption of what you know was anticipated in the first part. And we have like an explosion of all the the things, the bad things that we will we will understand that they're all pretty much bad things that are going to happen to the eight characters. Who, who had these divinations performed, had the, these visions uh, in, in, in the first part. And uh, and then we will have a third part. And I'm not going, you know, I'm not going to spoil what will happen in the third part, but it's, it's going to be a further development of the story. And when, you know, where we will finally understand the real uh, connection between all these characters uh, between them and the reader of the runes, we will start to understand something in this second part. But then, in the third part, we will have a full uh, disclosure of everything. <clears throat> what are what becomes the biggest challenge when you tackle an album that forces you to well, or when you tackle, I should say, a concept that forces you to divide it, its concept into three different records? What becomes the biggest issue for you? Well, uh, the biggest issue has been uh, having the right mood for every song and, and having the right lyrics in the, you know, in the right song with the right mood, with the right atmosphere, with the right, um, I would say, setting in, in a way. So, uh, yeah, the, the difficult task has been, especially in the first part of the of the of the student in, in the previous album where you know uh, we we were trying to figure what what was going on both through the story and musically because uh we we uh, at first we weren't sure that we were following the lyrics and the, and the mood of the concepts with with the with the ideas and the songs that we we were we would have all, you know ready since months before we had some ideas and songs we 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 wanted to develop and we weren't sure that they were following the story and the, and, and the and the lyrics 
Uh, this time it was a little bit different because um, actually we uh, wrote the songs, uh, both of part two and three, at the same time, uh, because it was all the COVID uh, the pandemic and so on. So we had all the time to to write a bunch of songs, and 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 we wrote both albums, and and we had the chance to, um, you know, choose the right songs for. The, the the right album because this album is is much more violent and it, it's darker than the first one and and also I can already tell you uh, than the following album the next one so we really needed to have the most uh you know the heavier songs the most violent ones uh the darker ones and 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 this you know having all the time to write all the songs and and split them and find the, the right mood the right lyrics put them here and there and it, it was easier this time because of this reason it's interesting that you mentioned the darkness because it's undeniable that this album is a very dark album it works really well but it, it becomes almost the glue that holds the songs together because the, regardless of how different they are that that darkness is always there either more or less is that the main characteristic that sets this album apart that that sense of darkness that it has yeah, I would. I, I wouldn't use uh, better words than than the ones that you you have used just uh, now. I, I I mean, as I said, we needed a darker tone. Yeah, we needed a darker tone, and 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 uh, and I think that uh, we were in a way, and and probably it, it's been the story that helped us. Uh, I think that uh, we we've never been so um, balanced when it comes to melt the the melody and the you know the lighter side of our music with uh the heavier side of our influences because uh we, we've uh, it's it's never been a mystery uh we've always been fans of extreme metal since the beginning uh we've always been metal of, um, fans of metal in general but uh together with all of the classic and the epic and the melodic scene we've always been really fascinated and and big fans of the of the death metal and black metal scenes and and but uh, you know when you have a band like uh, like we are it's it's never so easy to combine the two things and we've 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 done that in the past especially in our very first album we've been you know kind of combining um melodic metal with 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 something you know with some death metal elements here and there some you know growls and scream vocals but i think that we've never been so balanced when it comes to melt these two things and i think that as, as you said uh the darkness and the the heavier tone is really setting the 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 main characteristic of of this album and, and i think that it's it there's a good balance there it's it's working we we really like what what you know came out of this when when I looked at this album, when I started listening to the album, and I look at the actual design that you guys put together, two things came to mind. I want to ask you about both of them separately. The first thing that I thought was, either you guys are genius, or or this was a, a lucky stroke. You guys start off the record with the first three singles. I I honestly love that because it gave me a sense of comfort when I when I start the record. I know these songs. So it's easier for me to get into the concept. It's easier for me to understand the story. And it's easier for me to connect with it right off the bat when the first three songs have already been released. And then you get, you know, that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow as you start to get more deeper into the record. Was that by accident or you guys are the geniuses that I think you are? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's more, it's more, it's more by accident, <laughs> actually. But, but let me tell you, I mean, um, when we chose the singles, um, you know, it's it's always a bit of an embarrassing phase of the of the work of you know around an album for us because you know me and and Aiden the guitarist are so we are the main composers and we are so um, uh, you know um, involved with the with the songwriting and the production and you know at the end of the process we we are. I don't know how can we see the album. I mean, we will never see it uh, with with fresh ears as a as a new listener. So it's always a bit um difficult for us to choose the singles. So we always um kind of ask you know our manager or our record company or friends or the other members in the band. You know, 
just choose your favorite songs, you know, the ones that you think are the best singles, you know, the one that can really introduce the album to our fans, to listeners, to who has never listened to Elven King before, and, and, and you know, just tell us, and then we will see. And, uh, you know, the songs that were most, uh, you know, uh, that were chosen the most were these three. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, there are four, and the fourth one is going to be track number four. <laughs> <laughs> it will be released on on the you know on release day so it's kind of you know a focus track not a real single but yeah and and we were actually uh a bit worried about that and we were oh you know four singles and they're number one number two number three number four yeah i don't know is that going to be okay or not and and now that you tell me it's 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 great to know but at least for someone, it's it's been a, a good a good thing. Um, you know, I think that Rapture, the first single, really uh, set sets the tone. Mm -hmm. You know, for the listeners to enter the world of this album, it has everything that you will find later on in the album. You know, the uh, the epic, the epicness, the you know the more most the melodic side of the album. You have the acoustics. You have uh, the you know the 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 heavier stuff you have everything there so we chose we chose that because it was the right introduction in our opinion uh, you know for this album and then the other ones yeah we just picked them because you know everybody told us you know you should have you should go with the hanging tree the bride of night and and her chant and yeah so you have <laughs> four singles that are the first four songs that it works for me and I think it works for the record because of the concept. I, I think if you're talking about an album that doesn't follow a concept, having the first four tracks, the singles, it might not work the same way. But because of what you guys are trying to create, the path, the roadmap, the journey that you guys are trying to create with the record, I think because of that, it, it works. So it's not like one of those things that it works all the time. It works specifically with this record. And then the other part of the structure that I have to ask you is that sometimes when you're listening to a concept album, the songs work really well in that concept, in that design of listening to the first song to the last song. But I actually took the time to listen to the record, not just from start to finish multiple times, but also listen to the record on shuffle uh, to see, are these songs going to hold up without that concept tying them all together? And they do. So how do you, how do you create an album that works so well from start to end? But then if you're listening to it on Spotify and you're just catching a song here and there, the songs are magnificent on their own as well. Well, that's that's really nice to know. Thank you so much for for letting me know this. Um, you know, when we when we approached the idea of of making a concept album and 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 this has been a thing that we've wanted to do since the beginning, because we've always been fans of, of you know, bands like King Diamond or Sabotage or uh, Wasp, who made really amazing concept albums. And we've always been fans of that. You know, we've always said once in a lifetime, we have to do something like that. But we, we, we never had the, the right idea, never. So we, you know, we just thought, okay, if we don't have the right idea, we just leave it as it is and we just do normal albums. But then we had this idea but the you know rule number one for us uh has always been since the beginning since we started to talk about this that we had to do a concept album that um shouldn't be you know filled with intros and and and, and instrumentals and 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 things that you you know after a while you just skip because you know, you just want to listen to an album after all. You just don't know, you know, don't want to be bored with a lot of, you know, uh, interludes. Like I said, and, yeah, and interludes or 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 you know, acting and all this stuff. We we didn't want to to do that kind of concert album. We just didn't want. We just wanted to focus on on the songs as as it was a normal album, but of course, go through a story and 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 try to give it a a a right pace. You know, following the story, still being a, like a, a normal album. So that was, you know, rule number one for us. When you look at the sound, I, th I think you mentioned the word epic before. Uh, when, when you look at the sound on this record, regardless of the differences that are happening from track to track, the thing that stays really constant is that 
there's great sound quality and great definition of all the different elements. Sometimes even feeling super simplified. I mean, you have you have violins, you have guitars, drums, bass. Like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of moving pieces, if you will. Uh, how how much of that is defined by you guys during the 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 pre production of the record, and then how much of that is defined by the the mixing and production that comes afterwards? You know, I think that a lot of that is uh, thanks to the fact that we had a really uh, long uh, pre-production process this time. Uh, we uh, recorded demos and we, uh, when, while we were recording the pre-productions, we uh, recorded everything already in that phase, you know, so all the guitar parts, all the vocal parts. And this time me and Aidan, we also took care of the keyboards and all the orchestrations. So that gave us really, because, you know, usually we asked some other guys, some other musicians to come up with the orchestrations and the keyboard parts. But, you know, when you ask them, when you ask someone to do something like that, they just, you know, pick up a, a really simple demo and they create uh, incredible parts, great parts, amazing parts. But then you put them on the song and then you you also add the vocals, you add the violins, you add everything else, and all of those you know beautiful parts they just disappear because you have so many things going on, too much, you know, too many things, you know, going up and down. And and when you're in the mixing phase, you'll have to delete this track and that track, and and in the end you have just a couple of tracks and you can barely hear them, you know. So this time we wanted to avoid that, and and we worked you know, on, on, on also on these, on these things, also on the keyboards and orchestrations. And when you have all in mind and you know, the songs, you know, deeply, you know, that uh, uh, you don't need a million violins there. You don't need a million strings. You don't need, you know, so many things going on, just need a couple of tracks and they have to be working, you know, with all the rest. So I think that that that's what really helped us, you know, reaching that kind of result and of course then we had the help of of scott atkins during the mixing phase and some things you know he just he deleted some things as well because he said this is too much or you know if i turn up the volume of, on this piano then you, you 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 won't hear the vocals and you know all these kind of adjustments when you you know go through the mixing phase so it, it was a big help also on that but i think yeah that the big thing was working hard on the pre-productions and when it comes to your vocals, does working on a concept record impact the way you approach an album vocally or is the same thing for you? Well, sometimes it, it does because it's uh, you go, you know, through the, the moods and the atmospheres of the album. So you get a little bit more theatrical, maybe, uh, especially when you when I uh, talk through the characters, you know. And sometimes there is pain, sometimes there is hate, sometimes there is violence, especially on this album. So, yeah, vocals really uh, had to go, you know, with that. And 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 I had uh, a lot of that thing going. And it, it's 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 super because you 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 add a certain kind of you know of uh, theatrical uh, singing to that, and it's 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 great. You know, it's it's really cool. It's like acting. It's not it's not singing anymore. Uh, it's like more acting and it's it's really cool is what I, I love the most about singing is is when you interpret something you know when you you you, you yeah more like an actor than a, a real singer when you're working on an album like uh, like this one and even like its predecessor and the one that's going to follow uh do you feel like a portion of you is more uh, of a storyteller less of a singer from that perspective of like you said acting do you become more of a storyteller yeah yeah, I think it's it's uh yeah exactly as you say, I, I feel more of a story storyteller even when I'm on stage, I you know I see a lot of my uh let's say colleagues when we you know when we play all the these great singers we've 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 been playing with and you know festivals and tours and so on and they're all you know concerned on their you know technical side of singing and really concerned on that and on you know warming up warming up before the the show and all of this while i am just you know trying to concentrate on the lyrics and trying to find the right mood in order to you know deliver a performance on stage and sometimes i miss the technical side i just you know don't care about it and 
you know, maybe I should do that a bit more, but I'm really concerned about the performance and, and, and as you said, the, the, the storytelling is something really important. With, with an album that has this powerful sound, I mean, this is a big sounding record. Um, an album that has that dark undertones that we've talked about. Uh, do, do you feel like this album will uh, hit the fans differently because of those attributes and, and, and maybe create some expectations? I know you said that the next record is not going to be as dark, but do you feel like uh, maybe the, the, how good this album is will create some expectations that maybe you guys won't completely get rid of that darkness going forward? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, um, I mean, we won't get rid of that dark side because there will be more in the next album. But generally, the uh, the next album will have uh, a bit of a different mood. It's probably going to be even more melancholic, I would say. So it's still going to be dark in a way. Maybe a, a little bit a less... A different shade of darkness. Yeah, exactly. Maybe not so violent, but still you know melancholic and probably a bit sad but we will see then if you know the, the songs are there so probably it will be like that but who knows <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i think as you said this album is really uh, and and the sound is 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 really important the the the, the mix on this album is amazing really i think good. scott made an amazing job i mean with we've been changing producers and 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 all the time because um you know, apart from being uh, musicians and, you know, uh, we, we're and, and fans of metal and music in general, we, we're really fans also of the of the productions and of the producers and, and, and uh, me and Aiden especially are always kind of, you know, listen to that album and, you know, uh, listen to that producer, listen to that one. And, and that pushes us to change all the time and try different things. And, and uh, so we're really happy what we've done in the past, but this time with Scott, uh, th there's been something more going on. Also in in the in the in the way we 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 work together, it was really into our music, and that was was great. You know, he came here in Italy to set up the the drums. He recorded the drums here in Italy in a studio, and he set also the sounds for guitar and and bass. Then we you know finished the recordings and he went home, and then he makes the album in his studio. But when he was coming here, he was listening to our music and he was making, you know, notes on our old songs and our previous album. It was like, uh, like talking to a fan <laughs> in a way or another. It, it was really, you know, going into our music and, and, and really trying to understand what we needed. And I think that he, he really, he really understood what, what, you know, what we needed and what this album specifically needed. I think that's key. It's key that you work with people that understand the band, understand the sound. And then the other thing they understand is the vision that the band has for the album that you're currently working on. And I honestly felt like this album hit all those right marks. I mean, from the design, from the singles, like I said, you know, lucky coincidence, but it works really well. It works in, it makes the album a lot more pleasurable coming in from that perspective. So it just seems like everything hit the right spot at the right time to make this album the impactful album that I believe it's going to be. It's a great, outstanding sounding record. I honestly, I cannot get enough of this record. Such a great sounding album. The vocals are phenomenal. So nice. You guys are phenomenal. And, and the last question that I have for you is that what comes next? The album comes out April 28th on AFM Records. Uh, what are the plans for, for you guys for this summer? Touring, like where can fans hear you guys play these new songs? Well, at the moment, you know, after... Of uh, this difficult uh, period of the last latest years, you know, we 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 are uh, struggling in order to find a, a right setting, uh, with the uh, with the uh, you know the booking and and the the, the the touring you know touring plans. Uh, for sure, we will do something this fall. Absolutely, we will. We, we want to tour and 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 bring this album, uh, on on the road as much as possible. Um. Unfortunately, uh, this summer we won't do so many shows because of uh, of this crazy situation. It has been really hard to 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 book some 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 shows in Europe. Uh, it's it's been crazy, and uh, we will do some some things here in Italy. We will finally focus a little bit on Italy since we 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 you know we didn't we didn't do many shows here in Italy lately. So we're gonna do like uh, five or six shows here. Including two release shows for for the album, and when the album will be released, 
And um, well, we'll be in September at, in Atlanta, uh, the Proc Power Festival. That, I saw that's... that. I'm in I'm in Toronto. I'm in Canada. So I was like, oh. uh, I hope they did, they don't just go to Atlanta. I hope you guys had a few other dates. But you know, we 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 are in talks for something in in the states. Finally, we've never toured the the, the United States, and we really we really we really like to. So probably we'll do also something there. We will see. It's we are trying to finally settle and, and and find a good team also with with the, the booking and and so on. But we're we're almost there. So, yeah, you will probably Just keep see. In mind, Toronto, views. Canada, we're not that far from Atlanta. I mean, maybe geographically we are a, a, a little bit away, but by you know we're not that far. So if if there's any chance yeah. of including some Toronto dates, uh, some Canadian dates, uh, please do so. I I hear a lot of people commenting that. They're dying to see you guys perform on on this side of the of the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, oh, yeah. I believe the fan base would be thrilled. Yeah, we, we absolutely you know want to. So we will do our best. <laughs> All right. Well, Damna, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate you you're doing this. You're having this chat with me, uh, Elvin King. Once again, reader of the runes, Rapture, the second part of this trilogy. I see your cat is making a glorious. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> they do what they want to do. That's the great thing yeah, about them. Uh, exactly. it come, the album comes out April yeah, 20th I... on the FM Records. Uh, go pick it up. This album is outstanding. There's not. I think that's the only word I can say. It's really a great sounding record. Great concept. Uh, great atmosphere. Uh, go pick it up. And once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, man. Take Super. care. All the best. Thank you. Take care. Bye.